Hi, I'm Dempsey Pillar, and this week I'm reviewing. Now, before we start off, as always, I just want to take a quick second to remind you guys to make sure you hit that like button if you like today's video, and if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well for more new movie-related content weekly. But, without further ado, let's jump into today's film. The Babysitter, Killer Queen, was directed by Mick G, and stars Judah Lewis, Robbie Amell, Bella Thorne, Hannah Mae Lee, and Andrew Batchelor, aka King Batch. A sequel to 2017's Netflix original The Babysitter, this film picks up two years later and follows the protagonist, Cole, as he tries to outsmart the dim-witted satanic cult members after his blood long enough to survive the night. Now, I actually did like the first film a lot. I know it's not perfect and it's certainly not phenomenal in any regard, but as a Home Alone-inspired horror film, it certainly works. Plus, it introduced the world to Samara Weaving, and I mean, I think we can all say we're grateful for that. Despite teasing a potential sequel in its mid credit scene though, I never fully expected to see one. So to be honest, when I first heard that they were making a sequel, I was kind of excited to see where the story would go next. Unfortunately though, it doesn't go anywhere. While the sequel trades in the suburban setting for a remote desert, and while there are a couple of interesting twists and a few new characters, it's still just basically a rehash of the first film. For the most part, we spend the film following our main character Cole as he tries to evade death again, and not only is he being pursued by the same people who try to kill him in the first film, but, and I mean this is kind of a spoiler, but only if you're going into this film not knowing what to expect at all, so mild spoiler alert. But everybody who who's pursuing him in this film dies in an eerily similar way to how they die in the first film, too. The film also prides itself by having these countless Scott Pilgrim-esque visual effects and captions sprinkled throughout. And while some of them are genuinely cool to look at, most of them are just distracting or annoying. Additionally, the film injects these flashback sequences slash cutaway gags in an attempt to show you who our antagonists were before they were evil. And I honestly thought that they were corny and out of place, and they really made no sense to me because essentially it felt like the film was trying to make you care about these characters when it clearly doesn't care about them itself. Above all though, the writing was just the worst. Now, there probably is an argument to be had that maybe this film isn't for my demographic or wasn't made for people my age, but at the same time, I enjoyed the first film. So, what changed? <laughs> I mean, everybody else uh, just aged two years, so I mean, my, my sense of humor stayed the same, so in theory, I should still be able to enjoy this film. The only thing that I could think that, that might have changed was the writing, or the humor, or what the writers perceived to be funny. And that seems to be the case. I mean, there is literally a line in this film that goes, Plan B isn't only a pill that I take every Saturday. Like, what does that even mean? Like, <laughs> that's not even funny. That's dumb. I, I don't know. Uh, and that's not to say that there aren't some genuinely funny moments in this film. Uh, King Batch, who is around a lot longer than he is in the first film, in this film, uh, he has some really funny moments, and that's coming from someone who doesn't always find him funny. Uh, so I really enjoyed watching him in this. Uh, but in addition to the humor, there are also a lot of pop culture references that feel really forced and shoehorned in, and particularly a lot of references to the Terminator films, which under any other circumstances I'd consider endearing, except for the fact that McG already made a Terminator movie. Now, with that being said, I realized that it probably sounds like I hated this film, but I didn't. I just hated how similar it was to the first film. As I mentioned earlier, the film does have some genuinely cool surprises that I honestly was not expecting and that I did really enjoy and I thought that they were fun. And I also really admired the practical effects, something that I admired in the first film as well. Uh, they are very well done, despite some of the deaths being somewhat repetitive, um, redundant, uh, I feel like the way that they were executed was still creative. I just feel like there were a million different places they could have taken this story. And the filmmakers clearly cradle it for no other reason than to try and replicate the success of the first one, which it barely does. And for that, I'm gonna give the babysitter Killer Queen two and a half stars. That's some post-Jordan Peele era horror movie progress. 
Guys, thanks so much for taking the time out of your day to view this video. It really does mean the world to me. And once again, if you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well for more new movie-related content weekly. Now, if you happen to see this film, if you loved it, if you hated it, let me know what you thought about it down below in the comment section. I look forward to reading and responding to all of your comments. It's probably one of my favorite parts uh, that I enjoy the most about being a YouTuber, uh, just that sense of community. So please do let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all the time that I have for you guys today. As always, be on the lookout for more new content shortly. I am working on a ton of new stuff that I'm very excited to share with you. Uh, so I should probably get back to work. Until next time, I'm Densi Pilot. Take care.